Hey guys, what's up? It's Max and this is my first music production tutorial in the style of anime soundtracks. My goal with this video is obviously not to cover absolutely everything because that would be impossible, but to address some key common questions, tips and tricks that I would give to myself if I was starting out right now. And yeah, basically help people get started uh, as well as go into some music production and show how I usually write music. I see a lot of people struggle with uh, how to get realistic results, sample libraries, like why is everything so expensive? How do I get started? The first part of the video is actually going to be about that. I'm going to give you tools, free sample libraries that I personally use all the time in my work. The second part of the video is going to be the tutorial part. We're going to go into some sketches and demos and see how to actually use all of those sounds and the third part of the video is going to be about what libraries you can invest in later on so yeah i hope this video has a bit for everybody because there's a bit of production there's a bit of sample talk uh, and, and a bunch of other stuff so if you're interested in this type of content hit the like button and let's get into the video also for people who have been asking about how did i learn to write orchestral music this is the exact course i took you can find the link in the description below it takes you through all the fundamentals when it comes to orchestration and songwriting then yeah i feel very confident recommending it Okay, so we're inside my DAW now. I don't want to spend too much time on the absolute basics. There's timestamps in the description so you can skip around throughout the video. But essentially all a DAW is, is the room where everything happens. This is where you're gonna be making your music and they all pretty much do the same thing. For a quick reference of what people in the anime industry use, know that Hiroyuki Sawano from Attack on Titan and Guilty Crown etc. He uses Logic Pro. Kevin Penkin from Made in Abyss and Tower of God, he also uses Logic Pro. And finally, Yuki Hayashi from Haikyuu and My Hero Academia uses Studio One. And if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on this, I really suggest taking a look at Reaper, which is a free DAW. It pretty much packs everything you need. A lot of professionals use Reaper by choice, not because it's free. It's light, it's customizable, and overall I think it's just a very strong choice. Okay, so now that we covered the DAW part, let's talk about sounds, because you do get some entry-level sounds inside your DAW, and my first tip to you is that you should never use those for realistic music, in this case it's anime and cinematic music, because they're simply never gonna sound real enough, and no matter how you try to process them with EQ, compression, reverb, it's always gonna sound fake. It's just probably not worth your time, simply because there are multiple libraries that can give you those results right out of the box, completely for free. So let's talk about those instead. Okay, so number one is a very obvious one, which is Slaps by Spitfire. This is a big collection of instruments, there's 53 in total, and they are all free and they all sound amazing. You can basically write entire tracks just using Laps. And on the same side, you can get something like BBC Symphony Discover, which is an all-in-one library, meaning that it packs all sections, uh, strings, woodwinds and brass, and also percussion and tuned percussion, but it doesn't have legato. For, for those sections, and that means that it won't cover everything for you, unfortunately. Then note that you have a similar situation to Labs happening in orchestral tools, and this goes by the name of Sign Factory. Here, I would probably specially recommend the Helix Strings, if you don't have a string library, because this one, it just sounds very good for sketching. It only has sustains and staccatos, but still, like, the, the sound quality is great. I would recommend getting this one. And then the rest, basically, listen to the demos, pick whatever you want. The instrument is sound very realistic. And another great resource is performance samples. Uh, you can go into the freebies section right here. And from this I would really recommend getting the solo cello and also the Pacific Percussion. Just to clarify, performance samples actually requires the full version of Contact, while Labs and BBC Symphony Orchestra and orchestral tools already provide their own free sampler. Those are completely free, you have nothing to worry about, but this is different with performance samples, which works with a sampler named Contact. Contact is like the number one sampler, most sample libraries run on this thing. You don't have to buy it right now, but chances are that if you make music for a while, at some point you will want to buy Contact. Right now what I do recommend doing is downloading the Contact Player, which is the free version of Contact, which already will allow you to run some sample libraries on Contact as well, as well as it will give you like some entry-level sounds that you can use to write music with, which is always nice. 
Speaking of samplers, another cool sampler you can get is called Decent Sampler. And that opens the door of something like Piano Book, which is a community of people that enjoy sampling instruments. And you can find a lot of unique exotic sample instruments here that you can't find anywhere else. And two rapid fire mentions, here we have Heaviosity. If you go to shop and select foundations, you get this collection of instruments. From this I personally download the synth bass, the nylon guitar and the piano. They all sound very nice. The staccato strings, I think there's better things out there, so I wouldn't bother with this. And all of these libraries are contact player compatible, which means that they work with the free version of contact we just talked about. The second one, which is 8DO, does require the full version, so this is more for people who already have contact and yeah, here you can have uh, a bunch of really cool sample instruments as well, like the copper phone, which we're gonna see in a minute. Now finally, for all your electronic needs, I would really recommend getting Vital, which is a great synthesizer. You also have something like Search, if you wanna check it out, which has more presets. Vital is more if you're into sound design and you're able to create your own presets. Search has more presets, but in my opinion, it doesn't sound as good. So for making it this far into the video, I actually have a free gift for you. So if you go to my website that I linked in the description, you can download this free sample library guide. This is basically an extensive version of what we've been talking about so far. There's too many freebies that I can recommend to you, honestly, and the video would get too long. So if you want to go more in depth, you can download this and there I pretty much state and link to every single freebie that I personally use and that I like. You just go here, press download, leave your email here, enter your first name, and it's automatically gonna get sent to your inbox, give it a minute. And if you're finding this video helpful, leave me a like, because that actually lets me know that I should make more videos like this, and subscribe to get notified whenever that comes out. Okay, so now we can go into the tutorial part of the video. I'm gonna show you some sketches I wrote, and this is a cool way for us to see how we can use this stuff. I'm gonna play sketch number one, and we're gonna discuss what's actually happening. So most of this sketch is actually written with completely free instruments, a lot of them we've actually covered already. So let's go part by part and see what's actually going on. The core of the track is this piano, it's a patch from Labs called Soft Piano. Next, what I do is layer the piano with more sounds. So for the main melody here, I use the dulcimer by Laps as well. It's the hammered patch. It has a lot of delay on it as well. And the same happens with this nylon guitar by Heaviosity. This is the foundation guitar that we saw before. And it's playing the same thing, it's playing the main melody. So all together, this is how it sounds like. I 
already pretty interesting but still a bit boring because it's slow and there's nothing happening in between the melody lines. A way to fix it is actually adding some textures and adding some movement especially. So I do it with this pattern here. It's basically another guitar. It's the nylon guitar from Orchestral Tools. The library is called Strand. And this one is playing uh, Ostinato, a secondary melody that sounds like this. And it repeats like that. Now you'll hear it's already a lot more interesting. So what we can do from here is add more layers and in this case it will be all about reinforcing the chords and adding textures. First we have the sustained strings from orchestral tools, the library is called Helix. And for textures I used pads from Labs as well, these are these free patches. During the second part of this section, this duduk from Strats of Sampling starts playing. It has some very unique ornaments. And then we get a very cool layer here by putting together this Ivory Flute by Emberton and a free melodica from Waves Factory. And it sounds like this. So the track continues like this until I decide to switch gears and basically to do that I take out the piano completely which as we said was the core or the skeleton of the track and I take out the dulcimer and the guitars as well. All that's left here is the same pad playing throughout which is just the fundamental note. So what happens here is that I introduce three elements. First the staccato strings. Then I introduce the flutes from BBC, which is this staccatissimo patch. And then finally I introduce some muted electric guitars by Laps once again. It's the muted plugs patch and this is how it sounds like. And this one is playing something different from the staccato strings. As you can see, this one looks like this. And the staccato strings go from low to high, so they're doing a bit of contrary motion. And it's kind of harmonizing and making it more interesting than if it had it been playing the same thing. So notice how in this section there's no chords underneath, no bass or anything. It's just this ostinato and I intentionally did that to first of all bring the dynamics down and the second intention was to give this sense of where are we going now. So this is, uh, there's no harmony, what is the context, where this is gonna lead to, it's like asking to resolve somewhere. And then we resolve it with adding this harmony, adding the chords right here. <laughs> The melody here is going to be played by the flute at the beginning. And from here it's actually the cello which is going to take the lead. And this one is the solo cello that we mentioned before from performance samples. Obviously the cello is playing legato here because it's the center of attention, it's playing the main melody, so it has to be as realistic as possible. And next I introduce this nylon guitar. 
It is playing both the melody and the harmony again. I play it as if I was strumming it with my MIDI keyboard. Next, we have the piano and a mallet sound from hybrid keys that sounds like this. Hybrid Kiss is the only library from this demo that is not free. To be honest, I made a mistake, I thought it was free, but basically here you can use whatever you want. It can be any pluck or mallet instrument of your choosing. Then I add a very interesting vocal patch. It doesn't sound realistic, but in this case I wanted to achieve this effect. The same ivory flute is also layered with the cello, so it's playing the main melody as well. I started adding percussion, in this case I'm adding this clock by Waves Factory. And this is a loop, a percussive loop by Strashed. So, all together. Okay, so all that's happening in this last part is that I shift gears again, I take out the ostinato we built so far on the strings and the woodwinds, and I replace it by a new ostinato, or a repetitive melody I wrote on a synth, which is Search. To go along with that we have some pads from before, and also I added this Search preset. Next we bring in the dulcimer, the nylon guitar and a mandolin from Piano Book. And then we add the piano as well. Finally for the next bit we bring back a string ostinato to play on top. And the percussion comes in again. Then I added some effects and symbols. And finally it ends with this riser here. I would obviously continue this, but so far like this is a practice exercise. Let me know in the comments if I should make this into a full track. And by the way, the percussion I'm using here is the Labs percussion, and it has a lot of interesting percussive sounds. I'm using this one. And then I also used the symbol from the same patch right here. And that would be it for the first demo. Let's jump into demo number two. So demo number two is this one, I'm actually thinking into turning this into a full track. So for the core of the track I'm using this copper phone from ADO, uh, I'm actually using two of them. The first one is using the soft articulation and the second one is using this articulation called nails. The soft one is playing this melodic element. And it changes throughout the track. The second one playing nails is doing this rhythm.
Then the guitar and the plugs come in and they sound like this. It's sort of complementing the first melody we've established before and this is just the nylon guitar again from Foundations and this time it's layered with Ethereal Earth which is another paid library that I thought was free but basically once again use whatever plucky sound you want. And after four bars of that we have two more elements coming in so first we have the lapse percussion once again. And the melody which is being played by a nylon guitar from orchestral tools layered with the mandolin once again. Now for things like this I would usually record a real acoustic guitar because I'm missing more vibrato for this particular melody and I would layer this underneath that. Okay let's listen to the third and final demo. this cut off sample right at the start. After that string staccatos come in playing the same thing. This is Helix from Orchestral Tools. And as you probably heard we have this cello texture underneath. Now to make this part more interesting what I did was create this pattern. I basically rendered it into audio, reversed it and added some delays and effects on top. And then finally I chopped it up and made it fit a bit better into the track. So all of this together now. So for this next section I basically add more layers on top of what we had going on already. First of all I'm adding this double bass here by BBC. Then I'm also adding all of this percussion. So this is made up of the snare from performance samples, the bass drum from performance samples, and the timpani from BBC. On top of the staccato strings we also add the sustain strings as well. And lastly the melody is being played by the same solo cello from before. And near the end the solo trumpet comes in and plays the melody together with the cello. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, the last part of the video is going to be talking about the limitations and the things that we're missing with this current setup. To summarize, we're missing articulations. To give you an example, 
if we get this BBC violence patch here. We have a long articulation, a spiccato articulation, pizzicato and tremolos, but we don't get legato. And that's actually the most important articulation that we're going to be using 70% of the time. So all legato technically is, is just a smooth transition between two notes. So instead of having a note that just plays, then stops, and then the next note starts, you have a note that fluently blends into the next note. Let's see a quick example of this. This is the BBC violin in section playing a melody line without legato. Now let's hear a violin section that has legato. Pay attention to the transitions. And you might say, wait, wasn't the solo cello that we have been using before and the solo flute playing legato? And the answer is yes, the freebies that we've seen so far do have solo instruments with legato. What we're missing are specifically sections. That is also the reason why I was reusing the solo cello so much and the solo flute, it's because I didn't have many more options. So if you want to take this seriously and do this long term, at some point you're 100% gonna be like, hey, I want to play this cello melody with something else. For this, unfortunately, the only way is to invest in some libraries that do have legato. Now, the way I would do it is probably not buying everything all at once. So I would start with something like strings, and then I would slowly invest as I go into a brass library as well and a woodwind library. For strings, one of the options that I would personally consider if I was starting out is Array Light. This library works with a free contact player, so you don't even need to buy contact and it gives you all the legatos you need for violins, violas, cellos and double basses. And the reason that I would do it like this is because it gives me a bit more control to decide how each section sounds. I can pick my favorite library for every section basically. But if you don't have a preference, another cool option is to grab something like Nucleus, which is an all-in-one library that already packs all sections within the same unit. Here's everything you get, so you get strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion, choir, and additional instruments as well, and beautiful solo instruments too. Now the trade-off with this is is that Nucleus doesn't have legato for everything. So it, for strings, for example, you're getting legato with violins, with cellos, but you don't get them with violas and double basses. With brass, you get them with French horns and trumpets, but you don't get them with trombones and tubas. It has some gaps, if that makes sense. But nonetheless, this library sounds absolutely fantastic, and you do get legato for the most important sections. And lastly, another area that maybe struggles a bit when it comes to freebies is percussion. So I would personally look at something like Action Strikes, which is a great library at all levels in my opinion. Just as Nucleus and Araya, it works with a free contact player. The only thing is that it costs 300 bucks. I would wait for a sale, probably a 50% off that usually has happens during the summer and yeah I would probably grab this one. So yeah basically the choice is entirely up to you and needless to say you can totally start entirely for free and invest into something later or you can start with this free instruments we talked about plus Araya for example uh, which is a very strong start or this free instruments plus Nucleus which is an even stronger start. It all depends on your personal circumstances. So I hope this little overview has been helpful and if you want to know more about sample libraries that I personally use and stuff that I recommend buying, basically let me know, I might make another video specifically on that. And yeah, that would be all for the video. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you next time.